Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 630. The attack series, this is getting started with FMC. So folks that haven't used it, this is just a reminder of what FMC is. So Context Explorer, right, gives us a quick visual. We can build filters, we can show at least uh, the last, you know, one day, minutes, uh, months, years. We can see the amount of traffic coming in. We can see the number of events that may have triggered, right, over time. We see indications of compromise, we can see command and control and malware detected here. We can see uh, indications by host. We can also pivot from here, right? We can pivot and, and filter uh, based on what we might be interested in. We can do who is, we can blacklist and whitelist right from this screen uh, alone, right? And you could do that in all the dashboards, right? There's ability to, to be able to do that. Network information, operating systems, right? You need to understand the operating systems in order to truly understand what the threat is. We've got track and traffic sourced by IP, uh, by user. We see applications, right? We can see them based on risk or business relevant. How relevant are they to the business? Such as Xbox, right? Not, not very relevant typically. We see application protocols, client apps, web apps. We've got security intelligence. Again, I can pivot from any one of these screens that I choose to do so. Intrusion events by impact, by priority, Right, we've got file information, right? We can see that here. And again, we can pivot or search based on that information alone. File disposition, we got geolocation information. And then we've got, um, we can do that by initiator or responder. And we've got URL information. So that's Context Explorer. So it's pretty cool. It allows us to very quickly pivot on things. Gives us a quick view of what's taking place in the environment. Now, what we're gonna do here is traffic sourced by by IP, right? So what we're gonna do, you can pivot on the indications of, of uh, compromise, right? I just wanna look at this specific host uh, of interest. And what I can see is that uh, the current user that's logged into the, the box, right? So that's good information. I can also see that there's a couple IOCs that are attached to it. Now this is what we call the host profile. This is by passively identifying the operating systems and applications. Of, of that asset, right? As well as maybe the logged in user, right? When I go into operating systems, if I wanted to say that this was a very specific custom uh, operating system, I could do that. I could actually change the definition here. So we're still trying to figure out, we know it's a Windows family, but we don't know what version it is at this point. You can actually come in here and state what version it is if you choose to do so. We see applications, right? All the applications that are running on that box that happen to traverse the, the Firepower platform. Um, and that's good insight, right? We see versions as well of those applications. And again, when we know that, then we can truly understand what vulnerabilities might be associated to that asset. As we go down, we're gonna see things like user history, right? User history gives us an idea of who's logged in. Um, over a period of time, because it may not be that same user, right? It may be multiple users. You can see that here. When we look at attributes themselves, attributes mean that I can set this host as critical if I wanted to, or right, mission critical asset. We see host protocols. Um, and here we can see that there's a uh, malware uh, cat job 2.xls that happens to be on that back box and we can pivot right into network file trajectory. We'll get to that later uh, in, in another video, but very quickly we can pivot. Here we see vulnerabilities. Now this is through passive, passively understanding the operating system. So here we know that because it's operating system version X with these applications, these may be the actual vulnerabilities associated to that asset. Now you could tie this into a third party uh, vulnerability scanner to get more accurate information, but having even just this little bit of information allows us to know, you know whether the, the asset could be vulnerable to that attack and if an attack comes in, we can give it an impact level. But it gave us some insight about the vulnerability and lets us know what actions we might wanna take to, to remediate that vulnerability. It might be a patch, but it might also mean that you might wanna turn on a couple things within the application to minimize the risk. Um, so it's not only just turning on what Cisco has for security, it could be pointing you in the direction of solving that problem through another means. So here we've pivoted into access control policy. Now, you can see all kinds of attributes here, but what I wanna show you is, is that 
On the far right, you can see the shield and then kind of like a couple files on top of each other, right? What that allows us to do is be able to uh, add IPS and malware policies to those specific access control rules. Now here we're showing you that we've got this dcloud IPS policy and then there's a file policy that's also uh, could be associated if you choose to do so. So those are kind of like advanced objects, right? You build those out and I'll show you that if, uh, at least from an intrusion perspective. You build out these policies, you save them and then you apply them or attach them to the access control policy. So pretty cool, right? So let's pivot into intrusion. An intrusion, um, we're going to look at this specific policy. Now, this might be one policy that's applied to uh, many flows, uh, or it could be a, a whole bunch of different policies that are very specific to um, the flow that you want the additional inspection on. Um, so what you can see here very quickly is no recommendations have been generated. So click here for firepower recommendations. Now you could have went to firepower recommendations on the left side. The really cool thing around firepower recommendations is, is that because we're passively understanding the environment, we can actually tell you what policies or, or, or signatures that you should enable or disable. We can examine certain networks, we could uh, move the threshold from medium to high, and we can accept the recommendations to disable rules, right? Because if you don't have operating systems or applications that are running in the network, it may be advantageous to turn those, those signatures off, right? Because you don't want to have triggered uh, additional noise and using additional performance on the box. So here it's saying it, whether or not... Um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, 20,000 rule states for nine hosts. We see what are to generate events, what are to generate and block. But very quickly, we can pivot right into what does not match the recommendation. So these are all the policies that aren't matching currently right now that Firepower recommends that we enable. Now, we could change these, and I'm showing you here that, right? Because now they're uh, generate an event and block, but you could say, you know what, maybe I just want to generate an event first to make sure there's no false positives, um, but you'd need to be able to track that, right? So from here, we could commit the changes and we're good to go, right? We've changed that policy uh, from uh, having a, a certain amount of signatures enabled by default and, and really now a, a tune the, the policy more for what my environment truly looks like, right? So we're not saving anything here. Again, this is just a quick run through of some of the capabilities within Firepower Management Center. There's so much in here, folks. I've got FMC 101, um, but I'm gonna do some more of that advanced analytic, uh, more of the advanced analytics side of Firepower Management Center. There's lots here, folks. Um, so we're gonna go back into the policies. And what I wanna show you here is you can see their source destination, applications, users, URLs. You can actually even include ICE scalable group tags or formally secure group tags to policies, right? Using it as a uh, differentiator within your flow itself. And what we'll do here is we'll, we'll add a rule and we'll just walk through these attributes. Again, this is just to refresh folks that haven't seen Firepower Management Center in a while or not familiar with it. So you'd add a rule like anything. You'd pick a zone potentially, right? Maybe inside zone to outside, for example, right? You might grab an object or create an object to define what it is that you're trying to differentiate. You can do it based on geolocation, VLAN tags. We've got user identity. So this is integrated with Active Directory, right? So we can say IT admins can't use this, right? We've got applications and we've got this, you know, from risks to business relevance, um, uh, you know, Active Directory. There's all kinds of uh, filters that you could leverage. We can see we did a search on Skype. We've got ports here. You've got URLs, you can do it based on categories, you can do it based on URL or direct URL as well. You've got a scalable group tags. Now this is really cool because this provides integration with Identity Services Engine and now you can do things with better context, right? It's not just an IP, it's actually a device with a user, it's got a certain posture, right? There's a lot more context into that itself. Inspection here. 
Again, this is just a reminder, you, this is where you uh, add that intrusion policy or malware policy, and then you've got logging, right? You might want to enable and a ton of actions, right? Interactive block, block with reset, etc. Lots and lots of different options here for you. All right, so we're moving along. Just to remind folks, what we're doing now is we're going to look at the SSL uh, policy. We got a little click happy there. And we'll edit it. We're not going to make any changes, but I want to edit it just to show you that there is an SSL policy in place. I've got videos that, you know, from start to finish on how to do uh, SSL decrypt or, or truly uh, TLS uh, decrypt, right? You can see that we've got an internal do not decrypt, but we have one that says all clients we want to decrypt and resign. So basically what's going to happen here is as the asset makes a connection out to the internet, for example, it will hit firepower. If it hits the SSL policy that we just pointed to, what it's going to do is man in the middle. Uh, firepower will uh, give the actual certificate uh, on behalf of the uh, asset that we're connecting to. And that gives us an opportunity to uh, look inside the payload itself. So I, what I'm doing is going to, uh, I, I believe this is workstation A, but this is the workstation um, that's going to make a connection. It's actually VPN internally uh, to the uh, environment and it's going through firepower. And what we'll do is we're gonna download malware, okay, over HTTPS. And what if this is working right, um, because our policy says decrypt this, right? And then we have a malware policy in access control that says, okay, if this flow matches, please look at this for uh, malware, right? So we're gonna save this cat job too. And when we do, we see very quickly failed, right? Network error. So basically what we've done is we took it, it matches as bad, uh, we don't let that last uh, byte uh, go to the user and now the file is, is actually uh, non-functioning. Uh, but let's just copy that link address and let's be sure that we're actually decrypting, okay? So if I come in here and actually I want to get rid of that catjob.xls, we, we want to go to the main page here. You see here uh, error connection because we did a, a, a reset on that connection. So and that's based on the file policy itself. So when we go to this site here, let's look at the lock. And you can see that it says valid. It's because we have the trusted root CA that issued the certificate in the trusted uh, st uh, store, right, uh, on the client machine. And you can see trusted by uh, or issued by fmc.dcloud.cisco.com, right, or dash um, dcloud, doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, we issued that certificate, we did the man in the middle, and we're able now to inspect anything that is actually TLS or, 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 or SSL, right? Really not SSL anymore, but TLS encrypted, right? All right, cool stuff. Lots of stuff that was happening. Last thing I want to look at here is just remote access. Um, and this is just to show you as we move or progress through these videos, the next one directly after this is where we start getting into the analysis, right? The first video, we, we compromised the asset or hopefully compromised the asset. Some was successful, maybe some uh, not so much. This video is just a reminder of some of the capabilities of where you would look for things within FMC. You can see here that's remote access policy, uh, client certificate only. You see ICE radius is being leveraged. It's using a default group policy. We can look at all of that if we choose to do so. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into users and user sessions, and I wanna show you how you could add elements to that table so you could actually see more in or get more insight into what uh, VPN connections might be coming in and out, right? So this is a table view. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, right? The table view, you can add or remove tables to it, right? And all you have to do is just go up into the, the columns and hit the X. Now, if you hit the X, it's actually going to remove that email column. Uh, if you want that back, make sure you check it, okay? That's the only caveat to, to remember here. And what we want to do is enable some of the VPN stuff, right? We want to see VPN client application, client OS, 
uh, client public IP uh, connection profile, VPN group policy, and, and the VPN session type, right? We want all of this and we want to add it to this. So when we're looking at active sessions, we can actually see how they're coming in from a VPN perspective. And remember, we can log out from here, right? So say there was somebody connected with, it's maybe time to terminate them. We can certainly click uh, uh, log out from here. Now, um, I don't have anybody connected through VPN at this point in time, but you can see here, right? If you scroll over to the right a little bit, you can start seeing the VPN session type, group policy, profile, you know, public IP, the OS, and the client application. Really cool stuff. So let's get ready for the next video.